Good morning uh, to you all, brothers and sisters in the Dhammas, uncles and aunties. Huh? For today's subject, the great compassion of the Buddha. Now, compassion is a, a very uh, lofty subject. Perhaps uh, it's a very high mental state to develop. This type of mental states, if we develop them, mm, we can be said to be among the gods. Eh? Can lead to the Brahma world. Eh? Sometimes you see, uh, in Thailand especially, they have a deva with four faces, eh? with four faces and many hands, uh, symbolic of Brahma. Eh? So last week, uh, you listen to the first one by Brother Victor on loving kindness. So this morning you have the second one, compassion. But these states can be developed even though uh, sometimes you think, wow, compassion, eh? so high and lofty, where to start? Eh? But compassion is necessary uh, even for us, for lay people in, uh, for lay people, let's say, uh, living a lay's life, eh? like uh, a family, family men or family uh, women, and then going to work and come back and mixing with others. Now these, these mental states, you find uh, compassion, it, it, uh, it deals more with uh, other people, it eh? deals more, so it develops compassion on others, on others. So, so if we, if we, in a sense, thinking more of others, then we slowly start to think less and less of ourselves. Eh? Otherwise, our whole life is uh, generated by uh, the uh, very strong personality, eh? very strong I. I want to do this, I want to do that. Even if it is wholesome things, eh? wholesome action, I will do this and nobody must oppose me or object. Again, the, the, the I manifest, personality. I want to see, I want to hear what I think is correct. Again, the I. And it's surrounded by all the eyes. Eh? Uh, you go to work, you struggle because you want promotion. Eh? If others get promoted, you get very agitated. Say, wow, I work so hard. And this feather, I think, eh, I saw him three times not working. Eh? Why he got promoted and I'm left behind against the eye, if you were depressed and you say, I don't want to work anymore, but you're forced to work anyway. Now, now it centers, our world centers, apart from the personality of your I, it goes on perhaps to your family, eh? my wife, my husband, or my kids. Eh? If your kids do something towards you, never mind. If other kids do something to you, wow, that's terrible. Eh? Again, spread on, perhaps identify as your friend, uh, my friend, perhaps my race, and my, 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 as it goes on. Compassion to uh, uh, blur, compassion blur the personality of I, and it also blur, blur the, the closeness of your loved ones, and friends, and race, and so forth. It surpasses. Uh, there's no barrier to compassion. Now as we practice more and more developing compassion, the i the self, slowly reduces. Now, the more we reduce ourselves, the more we are less involved, suffer because of the self. Eh? So I'll carry on to, to say, the Compassion, the characteristics of compassion. Eh? 
to remove the suffering of others, eh? to elevate the suffering of others. Now, this is the characteristics of compassion. Now, if we develop compassion, then that state of mind uh, would like to relieve, to help others, rather than always center on the ego I. Now you find that even in the time of the Bodhisattva, eh, uh, as a hermit uh, uh, Sumedha, he has developed very strong compassion. Eh? Uh, one of the very strong characteristics, very, very strong characteristics to, to become a Samasam Buddha is to have great compassion. Eh? Now, if we, one who does not have a great compassion, he would not uh, become a Samasam Buddha because there's a very strong pulling force pulls one, uh, no matter how much or how much trouble or how much pain that one's encounter will still go on for the sake of elevating the suffering of others. Now then, Sumad, uh, Sumedha, we find that in the Mahayana, Mahayana's teaching, uh, this, this, this strong compassion uh, is always emphasized uh, that uh, Sumedha assert that he will not escape alone by himself. Uh, he will not become an arahant, a saint, and thereby escape from sansara alone by himself. Uh, he will not escape as long as there are people who are suffering. Uh, he will not want to escape until he has uh, spread, he has become realized and spread the teachings to others to help them escape together. Now you see such type of compassion, uh, it is very great indeed. Eh? Whereas most of us perhaps, uh, if we say, uh, hey come let's donate blood, eh? I say, ayah, no lah, my blood very little left. <laughs> you know, eh? I'm also lack of blood, eh? like that. Eh? Then perhaps you say, uh, uh, now it's lah, no joke. <laughs> yeah? If you give them the needle, not clean, how? Eh? Like that. We have a thousand and one excuses. Eh? Perhaps we say, why not donate one month salary to good cause? One month cannot lah, five percent maybe. Eh? <laughs> eh, like that. Eh? We can't even uh, work, uh, really sacrifice one month's work to help others. Not to say uh, Sumeda as a hermit and after uh, being confirmed by the uh, by the Buddha the Pankara. Huh? He struggled for how long? He struggled for four asankayas and a thousand kapas. Kapas means world cycles. Huh? Four asankayas. Imagine that. A thousand kapas. A thousand kapas. Let's forget about the asankayas. Just the kapas will do. You know how long is one kapas? Uh, let's say uh, uh, Buddha gave a simile on uh, a solid rock, huh? six miles long, six miles wide, and six miles height. And a uh, hundred years, uh, uh, a deva will take a piece of cloth and wipe it once. Every hundred years, wipe it once until that solid block, without even a tiny hole, becomes all turned into dust. That is one kapas. And here, alone, he says, how many kapas? A thousand kapas. So you could imagine the Bodhisattva, even after being confirmed by the Samasambuddha, eh, the Pankhara, he has to undergo millions and millions and millions of lives to perfect his ten paramis. Not once, not to say you perfected one paramis, that is enough already. You eh? say, okay, I do dana. Uh, once, okay, I do once finish my dana perfection. No, many, many times he has to perfect that dana. Sometimes, as a bodhisattva, he does not remember uh, that he's a bodhisattva. Sometimes he does not remember at all. Uh, okay, he doesn't know that he's a bodhisattva. Even after confirmation, there's two types of bodhisattva. One is confirmed, one is not confirmed. Uh. One who is not confirmed means that Every one of us can say, 
Hey, I want to be a Buddhista lah. I want to be a some some Buddha lah. Eh, but not confirm. Eh, so you will along the way may not be a Buddha. Along the way, you say, "I am tired lah. I better get out lah myself." Eh, a confirm is by a Buddha is a true Buddhista. That means he cannot become an arahant anymore. His mind cannot enter into sotapan, even though. In in any of his life, he struggled to become a sotapan. He cannot enter into a first stage of stream winner because once you enter the first stage, then you have to go two, three, four, become an arahant. Yeah, because of the force of karma. So there's no way he can enter with knowledge or without knowledge because of the strong assertion put into his mind. So he cannot enter. So confirm and not confirm. Now then, uh, after that, uh, ah, he has to be perfected uh, many times because sometimes he does not know that he has perfected dana or sila. So he do that again when the condition is favorable. Then he repeats again and again. So, so that's for very very long time. Imagine that we can't even sacrifice one month's pay. Eh? So imagine uh, a thousand kapas. Now you see the amount of compassion is fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic to become a samasam a Buddha. Now uh, even towards the last life, uh, the last life of Buddhisattva, last life. Uh, you know, of course, uh, as a prince, he married a princess, a beautiful wife, and then uh, he has the luxury of life, uh, very luxurious. Uh, and then he looked at his parents and his wife, and uh, before he left, a child was born. Uh, and then he thought to himself, uh, "There's no way of saving them now." As A prince, unless he go out and search for the truth, eh? and then perhaps he comes back, and then to give them, uh, perhaps to give them the medicine or the knowledge that they will not die, grow old, they will not have uh, sicknesses, and perhaps suffering, a eh? whole mess of suffering. So he struggled for six years. You know how he struggled, eh? Stop taking food uh, until he was so thin, uh, so thin that the Buddhisatta, uh, as a Buddhisatta, uh, later he became a Samasam Buddha, and he described how his training, uh, that when he touch his stomach, he touch his back bones. Imagine that. Uh, so he did not take food, so there was no vitamins. So when he sit and sit, there was so much pain. He rub his body, and all the hairs falls down. Uh, Because no vitamin, eh? and the eyes were sunken, and he looked inside like a deep well. See how much he trained, how much he he suffered in order uh, to get what uh, he wants, to get the enlightenment. Eh? So later he realized, and then uh, went back, helped his parents, his wife, and children. Eh? So. So that amount of compassion, that amount of compassion, eh, is very great. Now, again, we have what is the proximate cause for the arising of compassion? Now, what is the cause of arising? Why, why does compassion arise? Why it arises? Seeing helplessness in those overwhelmed by suffering. So, in order to practice uh, compassion, we have to see uh, suffering beings. Huh? We have to see them, see them, and say, "Oh, they are so old, so helpless. They do not know the Dharma. It is indeed uh, very unfortunate." Now, if we contemplate on such type of subjects, compassion dwells, develops. Flows in the mind. If you just watch a dog, perhaps, uh, full of diseases, uh, 
a lot of wounds on the body, unclean, and they look at that and they say, oh, to be born a dog cannot scratch himself, eh? because of a lot of wounds inside the wounds. Now, if contemplate on that, again, compassion arises. Now, of course, there is a very thin line. You must make sure that it does not go into sadness. If it goes into sadness, then there is no more compassion. Eh? You could not say, Ayo, pity this dog, la, ayo, 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 very pitiful, la, start crying. Eh? They say, wow, so much compassion, this fellow is. <laughs> Uh, there is no more compassion, it's sadness, dukkha, suffering. He himself is having pain. So there is a, a, a thin line where it goes over into sadness. Sadness becomes unwholesome. So it is not compassion. Yeah? So you have to um, make a careful note of that. Now even people who are, are happy, enjoying life, we could still develop compassion for them. Yeah? We could just uh, start to ponder on the person, oh, now he's full of, he has a lot of money, he's young, uh, he does not understand, he enjoys life, later he will suffer. Why? Because he does not accumulate wholesome karma. So he keep on using up the wholesome karma. He does not uh, accumulate further. So he has no chance to develop wisdom to escape from suffering. Very soon, he will die. Now, with such type of contemplation, again, compassion arises. Eh? So, if one were to develop it into great length, every day he contemplates intensive, intensively. Eh? Like when you do intensive meditation in vipassana, in sight. He keeps on doing it for the whole day, for the whole week, for the whole month. For whole two months, ten months, one year, two years, every day, wake up early in the morning, start to be mindful. Eh? And uh, start at 4 a.m. and meditate until 12 p.m., drop down to sleep mindfully, wake up 4 a.m., start again being mindful. Like that, like that, like that. Then the compassion will develop and become very, very strong. That the mind will enter into a state of jhana, jhana, ecstasies, mental absorption. Mind is filled with compassion. Then we, we say, Sankina, it has taken roots, hetu, taken roots. So when it has taken roots means that whenever an object appears to the six senses, compassion arises. That is called taken roots. It has become so strong that it has taken roots. Sankin. Huh? Sankin means taken roots. It has grown roots. Now, it is something like when a person has developed, let's say, a compassion, a uh, metta, let's say. i give you another example. Huh? Metta has a lot of loving kindness. So, so whenever uh, he sees something, he's full of loving kindness. When he sees a friend, he's so full of so nice, being so nice to people. Eh? Everything is nice. Even when people scold him also, he's so nice. And never mind, like, he scold me because he doesn't know. But even scolding, unpleasant, eh? when he touches the ear, it turns into com- it turns into meta. So nice. Eh? Like a mother loves the son. Eh? There's a lot of meta for the son. Well, when the, the, the son scolds the mother, also she smiles. Say, hey, little boy, you don't know uh, anything. You want to scold mother or father? Why? Because metta is there. It touches, it turns into love. Now that is called taken roots. So if one has developed a mental state that is so strong, then it has taken roots. So you are on your way already. Eh? If your compassion is developed to such a state, when there is a reducing of animosity when you find that anger starts to reduce hatred starts to reduce becomes suppressed then the compassion is very strong eh? when cruelty subsides then compassion develop now I give you an example of the Buddha's great exam- uh, compassion eh? he practiced that every morning when the Buddha wakes up early in the morning 
He would survey the world, and when he surveyed the world, his mind would be filled with compassion. The enlightened one, because he saw men drowning in the great sea of birth, death, and sorrow, longed to save them. For these, he was moved by compassion. Yeah? So, so uh, here we have uh, the enlightened one, huh? the birth, the great sea of birth. Huh? Now, birth is uh, is sorrow. Birth is a lot of suffering, even though we do not know it. Being born is suffering. Huh? Uh, the Buddha could see. Now it is described in detail. Huh? If one of the Buddha's uh, discourses, where you say first month how the photos is 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 developed, the second month, third month how the skin is developed, third month how is developed, uh, what month when when the child inside can starts to feel the senses is developed, huh? the nose eyes is developed. Every moment. We find that in the text we have, in the text, in the Buddhist text, it is wonderful, eh? Ah, it does not need a, 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 what you call that, a machine to see it. Buddha can see every moment. And even the worms in our body, Buddha can see how many thousands of worms, how many types of varieties, eh? ah, the varieties of worms in the eyes, how many types in the body, in the intestine, everything. So when you say I, the wombs will also say I. Eh? Millions and millions in your body eh? that make up your eye. <laughs> so you say I, the wombs say no I. So, eh? like that, eh? so both, the Buddha describes stage by stages. Eh? He says uh, when it's born, inside is very cold, eh? very wet, inside is very congested, cannot move. Eh? So experience a lot of discomfort inside, very dark. A lot of fear for the baby, so a lot of suffering inside until it comes out from the womb. It comes out, so a lot of suffering. Eh? That's why some, some of the you will find very interesting. Eh? Some of those who develop psychic powers, eh? psychic powers in Buddha's time, and, and they could see the, the suffering as a child. Then they would have determination that when they are born next time, they would not be born. In the womb, they were born something else eh, apart from the womb. So when they take birth, even as human, eh, they do not come out of the womb. Very funny, eh? it is a very exceptional case. They are born from, from the leaves, they are born out. I mean, such things are very fantastic. We, we could not really understand or believe them. But there are a lot of things in the world that we don't know, that we can't believe, neither can we see. But there are strange things in this world. There are millions and millions of things very strange in this world that is beyond our comprehension. Why? Because our senses are very limited. Very limited is our senses. According to what we see, we are brought out, our surroundings, of what people say, of what we read. Something different from that is very extraordinary. Eh? So our mind is very close up. It is not open up. It's very close. So a lot of things that we do not see and we do not know and we do not believe. Eh? Now perhaps you know death is suffering. Eh? Uh, perhaps sicknesses is suffering. I read, I read uh, last few days, I read in a magazine about an American eh? uh, was 50 years old and he acquired AIDS. AIDS, huh? He's getting AIDS. Now he become very popular. Eh? In Malaysia, number six one already, a little boy having AIDS. So he described, uh, very pitiful, uh, he writes to help other people uh, who has AIDS. See how he, he tackled his life, uh, having AIDS, how he tackled. How he, he changed his mind. Instead of looking outward, he was looking inwards to try to understand his feelings, uh, his, his wants, his desire, try to change, uh, try to live another whole way of living, a new way of life, different from his, his present life. Eh? He's very rich and very famous and, and very popular. He's a quite, quite a famous man. And so, so having AIDS later, after a few months, he become paralyzed. Eh? And then pity the wife. The wife would look after him, eh? out of love, would look after him. And then slowly, 
you see the wives, uh, the eyes turn into sorrow. Huh? They say every time they speak, it is nothing but his sickness. Every time the, word, the wife says something, it is about his sickness, nothing else. No more loving words, tender look, nothing. Eh? Eh? Now very sad look. Eh? How are you today? Eh? Very sad. And then he questioned, he asked to himself, who is suffering more, himself or the wife? The one who looks after him suffers more or he suffers more. There is a very thin line now. Because the one who is not having AIDS is as if like having AIDS now. <laughs> eh? It doesn't go out the whole day look after him because he cannot move. So it is like she is also having AIDS. Eh? And then uh, uh, he described it as very pitiful. Eh? Uh, one day he would look into his cupboard and he would see all his clothes there. Uh, overcoats and very nice and ties and everything. He looks at it and he says, he's a total different man. These are things that does not belong to him anymore. Eh? So it's a very strange world, very strange world. Now the suffering of sicknesses, eh? the suffering. Now the second one, because he saw them doing evil with hand, heart and tongue, and many times receiving the bitter fruits of evil, yet ever yielding to their desire. For these he was moved by compassion. Now you, 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 uh, the Buddha would see, let's say, uh, uh, see the beings uh, in this world. They, they, they so, do so, all sorts of, of unwholesome action to satisfy their desires. They will kill, they will steal, they will lie, they will perform sexual misconduct, they will take drugs, intoxicants, they will, they will hurt people, they will do all sorts of evil things. Huh? Evil things with, with their mind, thinking of unwholesome things, speaking of unwholesome things, and doing unwholesome things. And when the Buddha uh, survey the world and look at them, Buddha feel with compassion. Why? Because by doing unwholesome things, they will experience suffering. They will get pain. Eh? Because he saw that though they long for happiness, they made for themselves no accumulation of happiness. Though they hated the pain, yet willingly make for themselves the accumulation of pain. They converted the joys of heaven, yet would not follow his precept on earth. For these he was moved by compassion. Now, now a lot of times, uh, who does not want happiness? Every one of us seek happiness, isn't it? Eh? Who wants to look for pain? Nobody wants to look for pain. Everybody wants happiness. Oh, we want to be happy. We want to have somebody to love us or to love somebody else in return. We, we want to have a house, a car, good friends. We like to have good food. We, we like to have all these things to satisfy or to satisfy our mind we seek happiness every one of us seek happiness sometimes worldly, sometimes spiritual we seek both now then uh, yet a lot of people in the world a lot of people in the world they don't want happiness but they made for themselves no happiness they, they, they create a lot of unwholesomeness Wrong doings that produces pain. And a lot of us hate pain and suffering, yet we accumulate, do a lot of unwholesomeness that we will continue to bring pain to ourselves. Now, people convert heavens. They, they like to be born in heavens when in the text it's described about heavenly joys. It was wonderful, heavenly joys. Huh? You don't go old, you don't have white hairs, eh? you don't become bended and ugly. Eh? Early in the morning you look at the at the glass, eh? at the mirror, and you say, Alama, oh, two white hairs already. Eh? Oh, Alama, eh? then you say, I oh, get already, eh? my eyes got coming down, better go for plastic surgery. Eh? Something like not that bad. Eh? Oh, you so fat, eh? Eh? so flabby. No, no, we let them look nice and beautiful and handsome. 
But no, we can't have that all the time. We grow old. Eh? We cannot be always sweet 16. You know, eh? Like that. So, so in heaven, nice. All sweet 16 there. Eh? Very young, handsome and beautiful. No growing old. How nice. Eh? It's a dream. Eh? Like that. And then, we are not afraid of food. Here, we are afraid of food. Eh? We keep on working very hard. We save 100 thousand not enough must have two hundred thousand must have four hundred thousand why because we are afraid that if we spend our money become less and less next time we become poor we become poor we have no food to eat out of fear we accumulate but heaven very nice no fear no need to accumulate you want food it is there and very nice and the food is very nice taste tastes very very nice i have i have come across a few of them eh, who have tasted the fruit of heaven. You may laugh. Eh? You want to listen or not? One, one example. Eh? You want to listen or not? I tell you. Eh? I was at a cave once eh, and there was this uh, monk who was living in a cave in Ito. And then uh, at the time there was communists, a lot of communists there. So the people, it becomes uh, an area where, where nobody allowed to go in for a few days. And this monk was staying there in the caves. He lives there. And so, he has no food to eat because they don't bring food there. Huh? Because the area uh, is already under curfew. So one day no food, two days no food. Huh? And so, one day uh, he would sit down and meditate. Huh? And then he would make some determination that, that if I really is truthful to myself, I really practice uh, uh, wholesomeness I uh, mean I have food it is some sort of assert, assertion of truth eh? it's very powerful if you if you really do it if you really say uh, uh, keep a precept of not lying eh? let's say example you really don't lie very strong and then uh, in, in time of the problem you would say uh, as far as I remember practicing two years I have not lied even once eh? with this marriage may I be free from this problem. Ah, you will be free from this problem. Try it, eh? <laughs> yeah, then you will know eh? the power of truth. And then this man, a session of truth. And then, one early in the morning, he saw this old man. He was still curfew, eh? This old man who bring a bag of rice. And then he prayed, kneeled down and prayed to him. And then he offered the rice to him. So he was very happy, he was very happy. Oh, he says, ah, thank you very much. You have no food for so many days already, eh? two, three days. So he quickly took the rice and he boiled the rice. No vegetable, nothing, just plain rice. He was very happy. And so he told me that the rice was like to be for him. You know what to be? To be is, is a very big one, he said, the rice. Our rice is a very small one. Eh? He said, this rice is very special and very big rice, he says. About three times the normal rice, very big. Uh, some, if you go to Europe, you will know. Europe, they have this big rice. Uh, very big the rice, very big one. So he cooked the rice. He said, wow, oh, he said, the smell was very nice, the rice, he said. It is as if got curry inside, got fish inside, got everything inside the plain rice. I suppose it would be very nice if you don't take food for three days, eh? Yeah. But anyway, he said it's a special rice. He told me, yeah? You see, he finished, after he finished the rice, the curfew was lifted. The curfew was two, three weeks, so it was lifted. And so he told me, yeah? So he tasted the food of heaven. I said, how, how? He went to heaven and tasted the food, ah? He said, no, he said, he must have brought down. He said, he didn't go up, he must have come down. You know, something like that. And, and you see in the, you read in the scripture also, eh? You read in the scripture about Sariputta, Mogalanda, where the devas comes down and do dana to them, eh? Give them plain rice, but, but wow, the, the smell was fantastic. And the smell was very fantastic. So, if you go up, you will have very nice food, eh? Like that. So heaven is very nice, of course. You go up there, it's long life and, and a lot of joy, no fear. Eh? You don't have to wake up and see, I must hurry, I've got jam this morning, <laughs> rush to work and get school and, and, and struggle through your work and come back and go to sleep again. Eh? 
Uh, if you don't bring enough money back, grumble, grumble, like that. Uh, and go so a lot of suffering we experience in this life, in this world, as a human, but up there very nice. Uh, so if you can't be an Arahant, then be a Deva. Go up heaven. Uh, at least not so bad. Now then, so where am I? Uh, I'm lost in heaven. Uh. Okay. Uh, uh, hmm, where actually am I? Hmm. Oh yes, ah, joy of heaven, correct. Ah, yes, uh, convert the joy of heaven. You know what convertiousness is? Convertiousness means uh, uh, what we see other people have, we want. Eh? Huh? They say the grass is greener on the other side, like my neighbor. Eh? looks into my garden and say, oh, your, your grass is very nice, very green. I look into his garden and say, how come eh, his grass is two times greener than mine? <laughs> oh, you want my grass and I don't want the grass, but I say the grass looks better. <laughs> it's always something that uh, the other person has. You look at the house and you say, oh, yeah, so lovely. Eh? You look at his car and you say, how I wish to have a car, his car, like that. You, you always like to convert people's things. Look, we go into people's house and we say, wow, oh, this nice, huh? that nice, huh? everything nice, except your own house, something like that. Huh? So convert. So sometimes uh, uh, when we are in deep suffering, we think of the joy in heaven. Yeah? When the Buddha say, that is your real home. The heaven is your real home, he says. Now why does the Buddha say that? Why is heaven our real home? It is like we stay in the house, a lot of comfort, we go out to work under the hot sun, rain and shine, a lot of slogging, and when we come home, ah yeah, very relaxed. Eh? Take a bath and put down our legs, we look at television, turn on the radio, it is like paradise. Eh? So heaven is like that. After being a human, eh? and then we undergo so much suffering, so much pain, we undergo so much sicknesses, eh? and then when we are born in heaven, oh, fantastic, it is like coming home. Eh? That's why the Buddha say heaven is like going home. Eh? So, uh, don't afraid of dying. Eh? Don't afraid of dying. You are afraid only, only, only when, only when you do, do, don't do wholesome action, then you are afraid. Eh? You are afraid not of going up, but of going down. And then, eh? A lot of people get frightened and say, I brother Jim, I heard when people are about to die, huh, they see Gu Tao Bae Bin. You know, huh? what is Gu Tao Bae Bin? Huh? Gu Tao means a person very huge with the head of a Gu Tao. Huh? Gu Tao. Bae Bin means a face of a horse. Huh? But sometimes uh, even humans got face like a horse. Huh? <laughs> but it's a real horse face. Huh? So, uh, is it true or false? Real or not real? Huh? Is it in the scripture or not? Hands up. If you say it is real, hands up. Ah. If you say not real, hands up. Yeah, only one person said not real. The rest, neither real or not real. Huh? Or real and not real together. Huh? That's why in Buddhism we have four. Huh? True or false? It is true or it is false? Neither true or neither false. Huh? Uh, and it is true and false, both, huh? Very nice, Buddhism, we have four. Other people have two of me. Huh? Right or not? If not, means not. Huh? Right means right, 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 So Buddhism is one step above, we have four. It is true, huh? It is true. There are such beings. There are such beings as Gu Tao Bai Bin. So when you're going to pass away, the time don't see them for heaven's sake. <laughs> you see them from case. <laughs> Freedom country, they're coming to take you down. Eh? Uh, we call it uh, Chuti Nimita, death vision. Death vision. When a person is about to die at the time, it is like seeing shows. You start to see picture. Eh? Good and bad, good and bad. You see, wow, good, very nice. Then you see bad, ah, terrible. Eh? You see good, bad, and the last moment, don't see bad. See good, then go up. Eh? See bad, boom, you go down. Uh, eh, you laugh, but it is very, very dangerous. Ah, I have seen people who like to play mahjong. Eh? Mahjong. 
So when they're going to pass away the time, wow, they're talking to somebody. Yeah? Ah, wait for me, wait for me. Saka kem chikai. Three person waiting for the, me to come to be the fourth. Ha, ah, I think gone case. Ah. Yeah, gone case. Eh? <laughs> it's going down already. You think down there got majong, ah, sad case. Ah. No majong there. Ah. Very sad case. Ah, go down. Eh? Ah, hell got no majong there. A lot of suffering. Ah. I've I, I seen, ah, because we used to go chanting for the dead person last time in MBMC yeah, in my uh, temple in Penang last time uh, in the temple in Penang we have a program where people who are dead uh, uh, invited us to go there for chanting uh, but not really dead some is dying uh, and then you, you see you see all sorts of you see all sorts of uh, a reaction uh, and all sorts of things they are talking about they start to talk about things sometimes very fantastic things they talk about uh, uh, sometimes you see the fear in their eyes. Huh? Sometimes there's one person, huh? he, he says, Ayo, see, 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 got one person, very dark one, always, always squatting there. Huh? Who is he? Huh? And look, look, wait, 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 got dark squatting there, wait, wait, wait. wait. See, there lah, there la. I'm very frightened lah. Squatting there all the time, dark, dark one at the corner. So, wait, wait, go dark. Nothing at all, so near. Ah, you start to see that waiting already. Dark, dark one squatting. Huh? Ah, but if you see bright, bright squatting, remember? <laughs> then dark, dark squatting, don't care. Huh? Like that. Then we start to see all these things. Huh? I'll hear all these things. Huh? We can hear all these things. Huh? People start to tell us, then they start seeing things and things like that. Huh? Huh? So there's one person very nice. He, he, he hear a lot of chanting. Huh? Hear Something like, like Yang Keng, uh, something, you see. Say, ah, who is something? Uh? Eh, nobody is something. But he say, who is something? Uh? Here, something. Uh. Very nice. So, pop like that goes out. Yeah, very nice. So, do more something. Very nice. Eh? Why? Why? Because our mind, perception. We do it every day, every day we do it. Morning, evening, morning, evening we do it. Sanya, perception. The mind accumulate, accumulate, emigrate, becomes habitual. We call it habitual tendencies. So when it becomes habitual tendencies, before we pass away the time, ah, it comes back. Habitual tendency. It comes back. Huh? And it comes back. The sound, ah, like, like people chanting. Then it is good. Habitual tendency. Huh? Even without passing away the time, you also have habitual tendency already. Right now, people who like to smoke, huh? habitual tendency. Whenever you saw people smoking, ah, like that, automatic goes up, goes up, like that, eh? No smoke, give me one, eh? Ah, then you go and buy, habitual tendency. Eh? After food, he thinks about smoke already. Why? Habitual tendency. Every time after food, he takes one. After food, he takes one. So before taking food, he thinks of one. Eh, like that, eh? So, wow, after rice, got secret. Eh? Something like that. Or you see, uh, people foreigners, they take dessert. We don't, eh? but some people also do take dessert. Eh? So after our main course, we have dessert. Uh, we have ice cream, we have chocolate, we have uh, something sweet dessert, eh? cocktail. They must have that. If they don't have that, it is as if they have not taken lunch or dinner. Must have that. Eh? So after that, they expect dessert. They expect. Eh? But we don't. Or do we? Unless we're European. Eh? Maybe some of us do. Eh? Got a sweet tooth. After dinner, we like to take something sweet. Huh? So habitual tendencies. These are called habitual tendencies. Sankara. Huh? Habitual. So, uh, so uh, uh, now that is that. I'm lost again. <laughs> hey, sometimes I go out of the subject. Eh? Huh? Now then, uh, now where am I now? In heaven or hell? Uh, wait, hold on, eh? Okay, I carry on to the next. Because he saw them living in times of wars, eh? killing, wounding one another, and knew that for the rottiest hatred that had flourished in their hearts, they doomed themselves to aeons of retribution. For these, he was moved by compassion. Now you see people killing one another, eh? wounding, wounding one another, hurting one another. For that, the Buddha's mind was filled with compassion. Why? 
because the Buddha knows that with such strong hatred in their mind, such unwholesome action performed to body by killing, you will be aeons, huh? you will be kalpas. Aeons means very, very long time in hell, suffering. Now there is, there is a, a place in hell where we call it the fighting hell. It's very strange, but it is in the text. Fighting hells. So when they die in battle all the time, huh? pop their bone there. So when they're born there, in the place, a lot of weapons. Huh? In the air also got spears, all sorts of weapons that you could imagine is there. Well, they got irons with a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 needles there, all sorts of weapons there. And then they were on the floor, on the air, everywhere. Then he, when he was born in the place, people would look at them, and then they would charge at him, and they would hit him, they would kill him, he would die. After that, he was born again. He won't die. Huh? Huh, he died but born again. Huh? They were, they were peel off his skin, tear out, and he said, ah, so much pain. Huh? And the air would be like acid burning him, and he died. Poof, he born again. In the same place again. Like that. Huh? They were killing one another all the time. Until they start running, fear is there. Start running, but they are being chased. And then he goes to somewhere else, and they see another body. And he will kill the body again. Why? Because he must kill him, otherwise he will kill him. Like that. It's called a fighting hell. Terrible. A place where there is constant fighting non-stop. Now something like television, wrestling. Have you seen uh, wrestling in television? Uh, perhaps uh, the men like it. Ladies maybe don't like wrestling, but men like wrestling a lot. Eh? And the TV, eh? they catch hold him, punch him. Like that. Uh, they fly, they use the head to knock him. Like that. They bend his bone, tear out his, his arms. Huh? Oh, he landed in hospital. After a few months, come back again. Huh? Right there, huh? They keep on hurting one another, keep on causing pain to one another. Something like that. And in the hell like that. For aeons, imagine that. Aeons. Huh? For a long, long time. Millions of millions of years down there. Yeah? So for that, the Buddha mind was filled with compassion. Now then, we come to the last. Eh? Because he saw men of the world plowing their fields, sowing their seed, trafficking, hustling, buying and selling, in the end, winning nothing but bitterness. For that, he was moved by compassion. Now this is what our life is. Eh? Our life is filled with struggling and struggle, earn our living, must go here, must go there. We don't want also must do it, you know, buying, selling, working, typing. You know? To a lot of this, earning a living, sometimes wholesome, sometimes unwholesome, lying. You know? Keep on doing all these things. And sometimes we make it, become rich. Sometimes we don't. We work so hard and yet so poor. You know? But I will look at the world beings and see them struggling and struggling and Buddha mind will be filled with compassion. Yeah? And the Buddha will say, the life is full of struggle. Why not? Struggle for the end of struggling. So, struggle that has no end of struggle. So you see example of the great compassion. How we can develop compassion? By what? by objects, eh? by, by contemplating, by contemplating uh, on these uh, people who are in pain or who are in suffering. Even if they are happy and not in suffering, you can still ponder on that. Now they are happy, but very soon there will be sicknesses, old age and death. And if they don't do wholesome action, they will be bound to suffer. So when you contemplate on suffering, again compassion arises. Now when there is compassion, the heart becomes very soft, not hard. Eh? Hard means you say, okay, I don't want to help him. He died also, don't want to help him. Eh? Sometimes you see people quarreling, see eh? my He died also, no eyes to see. Very hard, the heart is like stone. Eh? 
Huh? But when you have compassion, now it's very soft, even softer than flowers. Very soft. It has a lot of pity. Huh? When you quarrel, the time angry, but after that, there's compassion, especially mother for the children. Mother for the children. Huh? There's uh, there's mother when you scold the children sometimes. Do not talk. Uh, very cruel. Huh? You go outside and, and let the the cow kill you. Uh. Uh, very 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 uh, harsh. Huh? There's one sutra on, on this. The mother, the Buddha described on this mother. Eh? The mother, no matter how she scold the child, the heart also is like flowers towards the child. Eh? The child, very naughty child, eh? irritates the mother. The, the mother say, this pet of child, eh? you do this to your mother. Chak eh? eh? it hurt my heart. Eh? You go out the time, the bull will kill you. Or go taxi. Eh? Eh? Like that, eh? So this child was still happy. Eh? So what nonsense, eh? Ah, like that. So he goes out for his work. And then in India, a lot of bua, cows. On the road right now, they're not caught one. Because they are worshipped as gods. Ah, so they are not catch one. They are, they are let. And then some, a lot of time they kill people, but still, like that. They, still, they are free, like that, in India. Ah, even if they, you see in the market, the, the cow come, they will start to kneel and pray. Allah, Allah, like that. So why? Uh, <coughs> they are praying. Uh, the cow don't come to their store. Uh. If the cow come to their store, finish uh, the vegetable all gone. And they cannot chase. If they chase the cow, the other people will scold him. <coughs> so they're not allowed to chase. So they wow, they kneel down and pray. They say, you want to this? Uh, praying to the cow not to eat the store. Uh, the heart must be saved. Go oh, next store, uh, very nice, uh, the veggie. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Uh. A lot of suffering. Uh, you are not in the place. If you are in her place, you will cry and not laugh. Like that, eh? So he, the, 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 the son was, was going through the, the, the forest. And the, the cow was, there was one cow, very fierce cow. And the cow looked at him, very fierce, eh? going to touch him. Then he suddenly remembered, I had a mother say, on my way, <laughs> I will be killed by the bulls. Eh? Like that, eh? he, he, she was suddenly seized with fear. Huh? And then he had an assertion of truth. Assertion of truth. Then he say, but he say, my mother, he say, will not really want me to be killed by the cow. Huh? If it is so, with the assertion of truth, may I not be killed by this cow. And then the cow suddenly becomes very quiet and let him go. Huh? Ah, you don't want to practice and say, oh, hey, say what you said, not true, what my assertion doesn't work on that. Different, there must be condition for assertion of truth. Condition. Huh? There are few conditions for it to work. And nobody can just say, Oh, assertion of truth, I like to pray mahjong, therefore, yeah, I speak it the truth. <laughs> if this truth, may I be wealthy, first price. Cannot. Ah, it wouldn't work, this style assertion. So, see you got condition. Eh? So, uh, okay, practicing. It needs, it needs, uh, it needs to practice. Uh, uh, with this object, huh? people who are in suffering. Huh? So, so if you develop that, the heart becomes very soft. Very soft, and it, it becomes very nice. It helps people. And it's very helpful. And then you find that the mind becomes very calm after some time. Because it is samatha meditation. Samatha. Tranquility meditation. The Brahma Viharas is classified, or they are classified, under Brahma Viharas. Brahma Viharas means the abodes of the Brahma. So it is Samatha meditation. It is not Vipassana. It does not develop insight. It develops tranquility. Mind becomes very peaceful and very calm. So after practicing compassion for some time, the mind becomes very, very calm, very peaceful. And then it thinks about people, other people, then it loses. It loses the concentration on the self, personality. It loses the thinking of I this, I that, I all the time. But it thinks of others. Yeah? So, so the mind becomes more and more tranquil. So when the mind becomes more and more tranquil, uh, there is calmness, there is joy. Yeah? Life becomes very, uh, very, very joyful. Now if you see a life that is... Uh, very tranquil, like meditators. If they go for intensive meditation for some time or a couple of a period of time, and when they come out, 
And then they notice that the mind is very calm. Early in the morning, they look at the trees, the flowers. It has a different glow. Glow. It becomes so beautiful. He looks at the trees and he say, "How beautiful is the tree? Ordinarily, the eh? ordinary day, you say this ugly tree cut it down. Eh? But when the mind is very calm, say, oh, so beautiful is the tree. The leaf is so beautiful. The flower is so beautiful. Even everybody is so beautiful. But he looks at the world. He see the world filled with beauty. Why? Because of that state of joy." When the mind is filled with joy and calmness, the whole world becomes joyful. But when the mind is in the state of anger and hatred, ha, gone case. The whole world is very hateful. You don't trust anybody at all. You don't trust the whole world. Don't even trust your mother and father. <laughs> when the field is so much hatred, huh? you don't trust anybody at all. Hmm? So, in the practice of compassion. The mind can reach to a very high stage of mental absorption, and if you die, or if a meditator, a person who has such mental states, die with this frame of mind, the mind in absorption, when the meditator, when he's going to pass away, he develops his mind, he goes into compassion. You are able to do it if a one is a meditator. He, he develops the mind into compassion, and he passes away in a state of compassion. Then he's born in the Brahma world, from very high up, eh? human world, the four lower world, one human world, and then we have uh, the six Deva world and the fourteen Brahma world. So you just imagine four lower worlds, but twenty-one upper worlds. But very funny, people all go to lower world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? Because the Buddha say lower world is like is like an empty air. When he die, he fall down. Yeah? The upper world is like a bird. You must develop wings to fly up. You must develop sila. You must develop dana. You must do charity. We must do precepts. We must meditate. We yeah? must develop wisdom. It is like. A bird. We must develop wings to fly up. But down, no need to develop. Automatic. <laughs> Very nice. Automatic one. Pew it goes up. <laughs> no need to develop anything at all. Ah, in life, if you don't develop anything at all, it goes down. Like that. Eh? No listening to dharma. No keeping precept. Nothing goes down. Like that. Eh? So, so when a person develops, the advantage of meditation is the mind becomes very strong. For a person with the pass away, he tune his mind towards the meditation object, and the chances of going up is very high than going down. Eh? So for this morning, I finish the subject on the great compassion of the Samasam Buddha, and perhaps, perhaps we may also develop some compassion for the benefits of ourselves. And others. Yeah? So a very good morning to you all, and hope you may all be well and happy. Ah, yeah? uh, Brother James Wong, may I consult your further uh, interpretations regarding the state of uh, heaven and hell? Actually, are you referring to is it up in the world, or up in the sky, or is it the hell down? Under the ground, are you referring to that? May I consider for the interpretation? Thank you. Uh, yes, this is a very interesting question. <laughs> when talk about heaven and hell, uh, and those uh, 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 who are very intellectual uh, does not really consider hell and uh, and heaven, eh? uh, because they can see, it, can hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, but they can think about it only. Eh? So perhaps you can analyze it into two types. Eh? One is uh, we experience uh, uh, what actually is heaven and hell. The heaven is perhaps uh, an explanation of joy. We experience a lot of joy. Heaven is perhaps an experiencing of pain, suffering. Eh? So we can do that mentally, even though we may be up or down or anywhere else. You may be in Malaysia or you may be in Thailand or you may be in America. So you could experience joy, and that is like heaven. 
you say, wow, this place is heavenly. <laughs> uh, you may experience a lot of pain. And even if you're in Australia, that is hell for you. Huh? So we experience it mentally in the mind. Uh, and a degree of intense happiness and intense joy. Perhaps you experience heaven and hell in this life, in this body, human body. But there are, as written in the sutras, there are other worlds apart from this world. There are 10,000 world systems, media one, and there are millions of other world systems that are minor, minor world system. The 10,000 world systems that are affected by the birth of a Samasam Buddha. Samasam. And some of them, they come down and listen to the preaching of the Buddha. They can come, but we cannot go there. Eh? Why? Because they have more power than us. They are more intellectual. They can come, eh? but we cannot go there because we are uh, less mental capacity than them. We, we cannot invent something that can take us there, but they can come over here. So there, there are 10,000 world system, and they are again, uh, could be classified under 31 planes of assistance. Yeah? And they were even described in the text how to go there. Yeah, very strange. Mokalanda, uh, Reverend uh, Arahan Mokalanda, he likes after in the in the human life, uh, human human world. Sorry, uh, after some time when he goes around preaching and all that, he feels tired. He would like to go to a certain place where he stays. There are streams and there are nine, there were trees and a very nice spot. He likes to go there, a certain place to rest himself. And he would go. In, there are two ways of going. You can go with mind and body. The whole body, mind. You can go with the mind only, so that you don't really go there eh? with the mind, actually. Eh? So, so you can sort of, uh, uh, well, I won't go into that. So anyway, we go, the Mokalanda will go with mind and body, eh? the whole body. He'll go up to the heaven, and then one day he passed a big bungalow, eh? a big house, very huge, and a lot of merry there, eh? celebration. Then he goes there and asks the babies. He said, babies are supposed to be angels. Eh? And then he say, why oh, is all this celebration? And then the angel says, oh, this, my master is coming. Eh? And then he says, who is your master? And he says, so and so. Eh? And then he says, who is so and so? Then he looks down. And then he saw that, that man, the man down there is still alive. And doing a lot of meritorious action, eh? looking after the Sangha, is, uh, giving food to the Buddha and all that. And so, and so he's still alive, but the place is there for him already. Human life is very short, no? Tuck already we die already. It's very short, human life. The life there is very long. So here, 100 years, human years, there only uh, one day celestial, one day celestial days. So in other words, there, day and night, 40, 48 hours, here 100 years. So they think, ah, he's coming, but here, uh, 30, 40 years to go. Ah, there only one night, like that, eh? So he say the master is coming, going to die right coming up, huh? Why? Because it's a new scenery. Mokalanda never passed the uh, Mokalanda, whenever he passed the place, there's no big building there. But now there's a big building. So he came down and told the Buddha, say, I passed this place and there was a new building down there. Huh? It is like you go to Ampang and suddenly you say, Wow, I now got a lot of shop houses coming up. <laughs> Last time no shop houses. Ah. So it's something like that. And they have direction of how to go there. But the problem is, we have no means to go. <laughs> no, the problem is, we, we got no psychic power to go. Now, if you have psychic power, you can go there. They have direction to take. So you go to which place, you come to a mountain. Of course, not our mountain, eh? uh, the heaven's mountain. There are Nagas, there are Nagas. Eh? There are Nagas. You know what Nagas are? Hiding on eh? Nagas. Eh? Nagas are. Uh, snake, psychic powers. Eh? So there are all these things there. But it is beyond our comprehension. We cannot see. But when we cannot see, does not mean that it does not exist. Ah, there is another thing there, another point. There are a lot of things that we cannot see. Billions of one thing that we can't see. Why? Because our mind are very close up. We always th keep thinking about ourselves and nothing else. It's very close up. We are not expanded. We have not developed our mind. Now you say on the radio, 
he buy ten dollars radio. And he say, hey, how come my radio cannot deal in America? Huh? Ten dollars radio and the in America. You can buy a uh, two thousand radio. Perhaps five hundred dollars radio can deal in America. Huh? The wows, huh? very strong wow inside. More wows. Huh? It's like your car, Toyota car. And you say, how come my car cannot travel two hundred miles an hour? Huh? The Toyota like that. Uh, Eighty miles is flying already. Huh? Like that, huh? So it's different. Our mind is different. It's developed or not developed. It's different. Okay, now, nah? So just because we can't see it, let us not disbelieve it. Maybe next time you see it. Eh? So just put it one side. And why do the Buddha say that? Because the Buddha wants us to know that there are other worlds apart from this world. There are other places to go to. So if we don't develop virtues, if we don't develop wholesomeness, we may go down to other worlds that are suffering. <laughs>